Britt, how's it going? Robert, everybody's in the house. Nicole, how are you? How are you? All right. Good stuff, good stuff. Thank you all so much for tuning in. I know, um, you know, some of you guys have been watching this for quite a while. I really, 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 really value your support. And for those that are just tuning in, Robert, thank you so much. My name is Prosper Tarubinga. And uh, yeah, we sit around here, as you know, for 30 minutes so that we can talk about how we can help you start, scale, and grow a business that's actually profitable and enjoyable. And the response that we've been getting about this show is a lot of people are starting to earn more money with less struggle. So I want that to start happening to you as well. And I see Jack Talman has just tuned in. Thank you so much. All right. So yesterday you might have seen uh, me reading this book. Um, on one of the photos. If you haven't seen it's on my profile, you should go in and check it out. I want to tell you something that's really weird about this book. It's actually handwritten. Look at that. It's actually handwritten. And guess who? By me. All right. So yeah, we're working on a lot of things and um, this is probably going to be one of the treasures I'm going to leave for my daughter. And uh, I think maybe when I get really, really famous, it's probably going to be published. It's got all my thoughts. It's got everything I've ever probably spoken. It's got all the things that I've read and it's all in there. Okay, it's just a really nice journal that I've put together that would be probably worth a lot more money than the pepper it's written on, literally. All right, so enough about me. Something about you today. Um, I am the biggest advocates for the, the coming year. Oh, what's happening? I'm the biggest advocates uh, for, for, for the coming year, 2018. You know why? Because a lot of things are going to change. First of all, we're gonna get automated cars. Second of all, it's the year of the robots that's coming in. So much is going to change in the way we know our lives, the way we know our technology. A lot of things are going to start changing. And Robert says, um, because after all, you can, you can, if you think you can, <laughs> great stuff. I love it. I love it when you guys, um, part of what we're doing. 2018 is going to be something huge. And guess why I'm so excited about 2018 is because a lot of companies are either going down. If they're not going down, they're growing bigger. And I want you to be a part of this whole big wave, all right? So that's why I'm rallying all my troops. I'm rallying all the people around me to have a business that's ready for 2018, to have a business that's available. And look, Corin, happy birthday, my brother. Happy birthday. Everybody wish Luke Corin a happy birthday. He's a fantastic lad. He's doing things and looking after his family. A lot of people need to take an example from him. Now, today I'm actually talking about something that might be happening in and around you as we speak. All right? In and around you as we speak. I don't think we're taking maybe our jobs seriously. I don't think we're taking what we're doing seriously. You know why? Because we feel like we're not worthy. All right? Trish Mileli, how are you going? I feel like we think we're not worthy. Yeah? And um, at the end of the day, who's Jess Martinez talking whatever they're saying? I want us to start feeling worthy of ourselves. I want us to start really looking at what we're doing and how it's going to affect our whole big future. All right. A lot of companies are shutting down. That's a given fact. Every single day I'm waking up, there's six or seven companies that have already shut down. But in the process, everybody that's been following me probably has a skill, probably has some knowledge, probably has some education that they're holding on to, but they're not giving out of themselves because they feel they're not worthy. All right. By the power vested in me, you are now anointed as a worthy person all right now start going out there and actually taking out your expertise your knowledge and giving value to the world some of you are might might be afraid of how am i going to do this become a freelancer all right become a freelancer that's all i'm saying because at the end of the day maybe you are afraid that 
you know, if you leave your job right now or if you leave what you're doing right now, you might not make it. You probably have expertise in accounting. You probably have expertise in graphic design. You probably have expertise in a lot of things. Jess Martinez, have you ever speared a lion? You seem like the type of guy. Can somebody take Jess away from here? I don't think they understand what's going on here. I don't think they do. Can somebody just let them off or tell them that this is not the time and place for their gibberish or their mediocrity? Okay. All right. You might be um, a chef. You might be a computer programmer. You might be some uh, data entry processor. You might be a copywriter or an editor. You might be an engineer by profession. Do you know that your expertise and your, um, you know, your, your um, knowledge can be packaged into something that you can help other people? All right. I want to help you package that knowledge that you already have so that you can help other people to be, do and have a life and a business that's profitable. Some of us do not have that self-worth within us to think that this is something that they can possibly do. All right? You, you probably are tired of, of being on the um, you know, employee treadmill. I know a lot of the people that are following me, they are you know, ghosting. Um, uh, there you go. All right. See, there, there's the, you know, you're probably on the employee treadmill. You know, now is the best time to actually consider freelancing your hard earned skills. All right. Do you know what I mean? Now is the time to, to, okay, hold on guys. This is, I don't know who this is. Yeah. Let's get rid of them. Thank you. They're gone. All right. It's now time to actually, um, you know, start harnessing your, your, your hard earned skills. You've been working all this time. You're probably 25, 30, 35, 40. But you don't know what next year is going to be, um, you know, you don't know what next year is going to be like for you. All right. So I'm here. I'm saying I want to help you figure out where you are, where you really want to go and what you can bring along with your expertise. You already know you are good at what you do. Do you know what I mean? You already know that you're good at what you do. So are the dreams of, you know, maybe freelancing dancing in your head right now? Can you type in what your biggest expertise is right now? Can you just type in in the comments? Are you a graphic designer? Are you a, an engineer? What is it? And if you're nodding yes to this, now is the time to actually take it full force by the horns. Figure out which people really need your services. Figure out how can you penetrate the market and figure out how can you establish yourself as an authority or as somebody who is actually being trusted or who can be trusted with work that a lot of people now have. Trish, I know you're a graphic designer and look, I know you're a really good um, graphic designer. The reason why I'm saying, saying this, in 2018, a lot of companies are going to be scaling back from you know, their expensive you know, benefit heavy workforce. They are just going to be tapping into people that are there for just a contract work, that are there for just one particular job so that they don't continuously pay people a salary. How many people have noticed that that's what businesses are doing? So they are now in, you know, increasingly turning to outside help. They are now incre increasingly turning to freelancers for help. And where would you be in 2018 with your expertise um, you know, uh, uh, without having established yourself? All right, stuff. Uh, Scott uh, Keating says, hey, Duncan Musaka, how are you? Tony Dorman. All right. So if you've got the expertise in the right areas, there's a good chance that you can now start parlaying that to become a freelancer. All right. And you can start sharing your knowledge and your skills with a variety of other clients. That way you start helping, you start being of value. And as we always say, a lot of people get paid in direct accordance to the value that you bring to society. Now, how are you going to be positioned in 2018 with the expertise that you have? Right? I'm not talking about something new here. We all know what freelancing is. It's giving away the value and the services that you already have. But maybe you just probably think you are not worthy at the moment. Like I said earlier on, with the power invested in me, stop telling yourself that story that you are not worthy. 
Let the freedom start working, you know, in, in your head right now. You see, there's one thing. There's no question about it. Freelance does not start with the word free for no reason. All right? It comes with freedom. That's one big major perk of freelancing. You know, as a full-time freelancer, you work whenever you want, whenever you feel like it. All right? So whatever expertise you have, you need to make sure you're utilizing that and helping other people within their business. This is what happens on every single day in my business. I need, I need a graphic designer uh, once in a while. I already have one in my team. I need a video um, you know, editor. I need a blogger. I need um, a copywriter. I need somebody who can be on top of my social media. Most of the stuff that I do is not done by me. So don't go on and break your knees trying to be like me. We've got a whole team behind the scenes, all right? So all of that is freelancers that I have gotten around from Fiverr, from freelancer.net, or from freelancer, you know, websites. You are not on there. All right. Some of you have a business. That's fine. But I want to speak to that person who is afraid of venturing out. All right. You know what I mean? All those those, you know, the, the, those hopes and dreams that you have about your lifestyle, they can be achieved. You can take all the vacations that you want as long as you are producing results for the clients that you're taking on. Yeah. Weekend getaways will no longer be confined to just weekends. You will just be doing business as, as usual wherever you are as long as you are fulfilling the needs of your customers. Yeah? Sometimes for some of you, there's not going to be, you know, a boss breathing down your neck and nagging you. That is absolutely what a lot of people hate and why are you subjecting yourself to that? That's the what, but how do you do that? How do people find... People willing to pay for help. Tony, can you type in what you do and I will give you a, 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 a step-by-step strategy on how you can actually do um, what you're doing. First of all, you need to get rid of a scarcity mindset. All right? You need to get rid of that scarcity mindset. Tony, can you type in what it is that you do and I'll show you that there's somebody who's willing to, to take money, to, to pay you money in order to, to um, you, you know, fulfill that Pro, uh, thing from you. Everyone is always trying to run away from some sort of pain. All right. Nobody wants pain in their life. So you could, you could be really good at accounting. Somebody is really struggling with their tax right now and they don't want that. People are willing to pay top dollar in order to go away from the pain that they're currently experiencing. So what is it that you're capable of doing that you can help other people from doing it? Social media management, there's nothing different about that. Everybody else can Facebook, all right? Tony, you need to figure out what are you good within that social media space? Are you good at storytelling? Are you good at graphic designing? What are you good at that will make you stand out? Everybody can Facebook. Even dogs can be famous on Facebook. Cats can be famous on Facebook. If you're going to be a social media management freelancer, now figure out what niche what are you particularly different? Can you give results? Do you give? What is it that you offer your clients that they're looking for right now? Because from what you're just saying, social media management, it doesn't end there. Is it Facebook? Is it Twitter? Is it Instagram? All of that stuff. All right. I'm more than happy to have a chat with you so that you actually figure out what it is that you can help people, you know, with. And uh, Scott says people need life skills. Exactly. Uh, with the proper background information, I can reach into a person's soul and lift them up. I believe that, Robert. And everybody else, if you haven't, Robert, the next time you have a um, uh, a Zoom meeting with your people, can you invite some of the people that are already watching my live videos that might be also interested in um, you know um, in, in, in 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 the stuff that you're doing out there? Robert is a is a legend, guys. You should look after him. Tony says Facebook ads generating positive return on ad spend. That's cool. You now need to make sure that you put yourself out there and you're a point of differentiation. The only way you can actually help people in the social media space is to actually help them by actually helping them. All right. So you want to go in and you actually want to prove that you can get results for yourself and for other people. People want results.
All right? Because you have other two things. You have reasons or results. Right now, what you're giving me is reasons. Okay? You've already, you know, depleted yourself of your self-worth because you are not giving yourself the opportunity to stand out as a social media manager. All right? I will talk to you about that, and then it works out, you know, um, for that. But I'm not saying it's easy, guys. 2018 is the year that you really need to stand out. You know, in the freedoms that we're looking for, those freedoms also come with a bit of a caveat, all right? It comes with risk and a bit of insecurity. And not a lot of people are willing to, to take that on. So, you know, we live in a world of duality. You get, you give. There's left, there's right. You get freedom, but it comes with insecurity, all right? So you have to weigh both sides of the coin and figure out, as a freelancer, sometimes your, your paycheck is not guaranteed. Right, there will be anxiety around where your next job is gonna come from, and you know it plugs um, a, a, a lot of freelancers. But no matter how you're gonna do this, you're gonna have to be able to sell yourself. You're gonna have to be able to be dedicated. All right, I really want to make sure that I can help you stand out from a lot of people and and people like Tony, so that you really stop just saying you are you know a social media manager. <laughs> Your social media manager, but you can become somebody who is actually of service to other people. You have gifts, you've got talents that you actually do have that you can, you know, parlay to other people. It's maybe time that 2018 is your, your year. Figure that out, all right? And, you know, the best way to ensure that your freelancing um, future is, 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 is lucrative is to actually offer a service that you know people actually want. All right. And Scott says, uh, people are real and not a production line. Exactly. People are not a hashtag. Everybody, you, you really have to go out there and create and relate to the people that you, you want to be working with. And the best way to ensure that your freelancing, um, you know, future is a service, um, you have to make sure it's a service that people want. And Scott says, must return to customer service, not business service. Exactly. So, you see, that's the reason why I show up, Scott, every single day for 30 minutes. Because I want to relate to the people I'm going to be helping or asking money off of. All right? Just because you like doing something, it doesn't mean that it's ready-made for the market. All right. And Trish says there's going to be periods of fist and famine. You're going to have to prepare for it as a freelancer, but position yourself well and it will stabilize with time. Exactly. I mean, I'm not saying it's going to be the easiest thing, but I'm saying that I really want to help those people that want to, you know, jump across. Because this is the time when you start thinking maybe in 2018 you want to be a freelancer. I want to help you start scale so you can also grow. I want to help you create, you know, a, a, a procedure. I want to help you create um, a, a, a platform where you can actually sell yourself. Do you know what I mean? And Tony says, how do you determine what people want? Okay, it's, it's not going to be easy, but figure out what people are already talking about. Figure out what people are asking about on Quora. Figure out, um, you, know, you know, when you're offering sort of a service, what are people already spending money on? Go on Amazon and look at what people are already buying books about, all right? If you're offering a service that people are willing to spend money on, you're going to be in business for a very, very long time, all right? So this is, this is how you figure out, um, you know, wh where people are already spending money on. What are they purchasing on Amazon, all right? Well, yes, on Quora, what are they asking questions about? Do you know what I mean? Search your local paper and internet to see see who is doing that. And, and if there's a lot of people already doing that, find out how you can do it differently, how much they're charging, and what sort of clients are they attracting. All right? Talk to whoever you know up until you turn out, you know, with the freelancers that are, are actually doing what you do. And guess what? Picking up the phone and actually calling them and pick their brains and find out, you know, what segments of the market are actually growing, where is it all projected to grow, and what sort of niche you can go into, and then you just carve out something that, you know, that, and, and, and then fill um, a current opening in the market. Tony, you're not going to get answers by just sitting down and not doing anything. 
Yeah? Think about this. 10 years ago, web designers were pretty, were making a pretty big, you know, um, you know, web designers were making a lot of money while freelancing services to the to, to corporations. But today, maybe the demand is lessened because everybody is now, you know, a dot com expert. Right. They've created, you know, free books, a lot of courses there out there. Find out what people are purchasing. Find out where, what questions they, they are asking. All right. Once you know the niche of the people you want to serve, you would know what books they're buying on Amazon. You probably know what magazines, um, you know, they buy, etc., etc. Go in there, open them up and find out, you know, who's the best seller. What is he talking about? And then you would know that this is what people are hungry for knowledge for. You already have the experience. You already, everyone can Facebook. Do you know what I mean? But then don't be too romantic about just the one thing. You know why? Because, because you know, things keep changing. All right. So, you, you know, wh whatever you're doing, just don't, just don't quit your day job yet. If you are still working, that's all I'm saying. But once you've decided to step into the field of freelancing, take time to establish yourself. All right. There's a big misconception that people might be having that, you know, the, the, the moment you jump out, you already start making money. That's not true. You know, just because you built it, it doesn't mean that they will come. So that's where the small steps are going to start, um, you know, coming through. And that's where I'm saying I want to help those people that want to make the transition in 2018. All right, Mark, how are you doing, my friend? I hope you're not driving right now. You know, I'm not saying it's going to be easy. It takes months. It takes years for you to develop a reputation and a client base. Testing and learning, testing and learning. But for that reason, you know, you want to start looking at the options now so that what I'm saying, you know, starts making sense. Because all I'm saying is I want to help you start. I want to help you figure out who your market could be. I want to help you discover what your potential can be. So that by 2018, if it's something that you really want to go into, you're going to go in there, you know, in full force. All right. I'm not saying it's going to happen overnight. That would be so, you know, irresponsible of me to say it's going to happen overnight. And it's not going to happen immediately. You're not going to get that six figure income. There's going to be a lot of work. And that's why I'm saying I am here to help you out so that we figure out what you're good at what the market is going to be and how you're going to penetrate that market. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, a good rule of thumb right now. I don't want to be irresponsible because I see where this is all going. Don't quit your day job until you've, you know, you know, between six, um, you know, probably six months worth of savings so that you're able to cover your, your, your bills. I don't want, I've noticed that this is where people think, uh, I, I'm, I'm taking them. I'm not saying quit your day job. I'm just saying consider freelancing up until you are ready to take it on full swing. All right. So I repeat, I have said, don't leave your day job until you're confident that you can pay your mortgage, that you can pay your health care and that you can put money into your retirement account. All right. Of course, that's where we'll start helping you. You can start moonlighting and generate business while you're going at it. All right. Okay. So, you know, in, 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 in like any other business, your freelancing career is as strong as you make yourself to become. I'm not saying that's the way to go. I'm just saying I want to help you start a business so that you too can have, um, you know, a life that's profitable and enjoyable. You're going to have to sell. You're going to have to relate to people. All right. You're going to have to go out there and put yourself out there. And Luke says, what would you suggest I do to get more sport editing work in and around Victorian sport? Go around and meet the coaches. All right, go around and meet the coaches, go around and tell everybody else that you can take photographs of, of them and then give them a, 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 an edited version of it. Do you know what I mean? Go around and, 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 and meet all the coaches. People are not going to know you if you're just going to sit down. Kuluk Corin. All right. 
Finding clients is going to be your number one challenge as a freelancer once you're starting out. Get people to know who you are. Get people to know what you, you're doing because the number one problem of people that are just starting out is they, they are used to having all the business brought to them, all the leads brought to them by their employer. They don't know that you have to go out there and actually reach out to, you know, like yourself, um, you know, you, 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 you want to do Victorian sports. Go out to every, you know, team and meet the coaches, meet the players and tell them what you're capable of doing. Yeah, it's a catch 22. So how are you going to attract the, cl the clients, you know, when you never had any? All right. Develop a portfolio. Demonstrate your scope of skills. Go with that portfolio to all those coaches. If that means, you know, working for no pay or low pay initially, do it. And then get a testimony. Samples of your work will be the best calling card. You can't just step in. There's people that have already started a long time before you did. All right. Make sure, look as well. Tell everybody that you know, your colleagues, your friends, your family, your neighbors about your new freelancing gig. Paul Harris says, I left uh, two years ago and four. I haven't looked back. Luke says, legend. Thank you so much. All right. Um, join a few other, um, you know, professional organizations online or, or in whatever, you know, communities that you have that serve in your field. Freelancer.com. Have you got a profile there? All of those profiles that you need to be having, have you got something like that? In addition to all those benefits you'll gain, you can also pick up insider tips on where to find work if you are connected. And Charlie says, build your rep. You'll, you'll come once they know your name. Exactly. All right. And look, I advise that you join local organizations. You know, maybe there's a chamber of commerce or a rotary club or some sort of charities or whatever involves the sports that you want to get into. Creative people are always looking and they sometimes overlook organizations like this, you know, thinking they'll be, um, you know, um, filled with Steve bankers or business people. And you know what? That's where that's who your customers are. Those Steve business people and bankers. So be seen like what Charlie is saying. All right. If, if it means volunteering in your community, doing something that you love, you might broaden your network of potential clients. If it comes to it, cold call, call, but don't call me at 6.30 a.m. and asking me if I got your email because I'll write about you, I'll tweet about you and or, or make you a, a Twitter hashtag and then you'll start trending, all right? So at the end of the day, guys, another point to remember is freelancing is down solely on doing something that you absolutely love, all right? It also means knowing how to sell to your market, it also means knowing how to sell your services, all right? When starting out, you know, 90% of your time is going to be spent on sales and marketing, all right? Work is not just going to stumble on you guys. And Trish says, collaborate with other designers who already design in your area. Um, you want to work, introduce yourself as a fallback so they can throw you excess work. It won't happen right away, but it will eventually. Exactly. Collaborate with other people, guys. All right, Luke says, I'll call at 8 p.m. and ask if you want to. <laughs> that call, my friend, I will ignore you so much, you'll even question your own existence. <laughs> All right, so a lot of people are getting into freelancing thinking, uh, yes, I've got the talent, I'm a good graphic designer, but they don't realize that, you know, a lot of people that actually do have a talent, what makes a, a, a successful freelance business is how strong your client list is. So you want to go out there, present yourself, and when you're building that client base, it requires that you plug yourself away tirelessly. Don't be, don't be afraid to sell yourself because you are here to live, you're here to learn, and you're here to contribute. All right? So that's your way of contributing to humanity by offering your services. All right? So don't get discouraged, guys. Expect rejection. It comes with the territory and it comes a lot more than the successes that you're going to be getting. But don't let that stop you from trying. All right. 
At the end of the day, I don't want to lie to you guys. I really want you to start getting serious and start coming through and figuring out is 2018 going to be the best year yet for you? All right. And as, as usual, I'm always here to help out. I'm always here to figure out what it is that you can actually do for yourself so that you have a business that is profitable and enjoyable. And if you've made it to the end of this video, please share this video just so that maybe somebody is, 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 is having a hard time trying to figure out what it is that they can do with their expertise, with their knowledge or with, you know, whatever, you know, um, experience they might have. All right. I really want you to win, guys. I really, really want you to start looking at what are you really good at? What can you do and what can you provide to the world that we can help you bring out? Okay, it's not going to be easy. I have made a disclaimer about that. I really just want you to win. And I really just want us that the people that I have around me are actually, you know, working together and we're sharing our resources. All right. In the meantime, Nicole, thank you so much. I know you got the cue. Thank you all so much for tuning in. It's a Wednesday where I'm at, uh, midweek. You know, we're slowly getting into 2018. We really, really want to make sure that everybody is coming along. That's the reason why I made this video today. You know why? Because some people are thinking, oh, maybe I'm not a business person. You've got the skills. You've got the talents. All right. All you got to do is learn how to harness them. And I'm here to help you. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of your day. And thank you all so much for tuning in. Leave, learn and contribute.